Greetings! Uh, we are Team 9 and uh, our project is flower classification with uh, TPUs. The project is based on Kaggle's ongoing competition, flower classification on TPU. We are classifying 104 different types of flowers. Some have only a particular subtype of flower while uh, others can have uh, many subtypes. Uh, the requirement for the project is uh, to use the Google's hardware accelerator specialized in a deep learning task. A TPU, unlike a GPU, has a dedicated matrix multiplication unit uh, plus a, a traditional uh, processing unit. So the goal of this competition is uh, finding the, uh, the best model that works on uh, TPUs. The data is provided by the Kaggle website. They are given in three different resolutions. The largest resolution is 512 by 512 that has 12,000 flower images, which makes up 2.94 gigabytes of data. The same number of data are available in other resolutions. They are given to make the training a little faster or maybe tune up the training uh, hyperparameters. The data was given to us not as a pair of image and CSV files. They were actually encapsulated into one format uh, TF rec extension or TF rec format. TF rec format is a container format frequently used in TensorFlow for optimal training uh, performance. Each uh, .tf rec has uh, three attributes. Uh, one is the ID and the label, which is tells in what class it is, one of those 104 classes, and also the array form of actual image. Our project is actually a larger scale image classification. The motivation for us to choose this project was first, the flower classification of 104 different types of classes of class perfectly aligned with, the, with our core subject. At the same time, we've got an opportunity to compete on the platform and learn more about the platform. Uh, generally, TPUs are very fast, so most of the TPUs tend to have data bottlenecks. In one single training epoch, most of the time the, train, uh, the TPU is waiting for the training data therefore being idle. In order to overcome this, tens of uh, TPUs usually read from Google Cloud Storage, which disperses the data into several large files, therefore being able to stream to all of them parallelly generated in a group. Our strategy uh, to use the TPUs efficiently at the same time train our model well was first the input data pipeline. We have used the TensorFlow's uh, native TF record container format through which we can automatically stream data parallelly. We have used several different kinds of data applications which I will come to. Uh, in case of TPUs, the ones provided by Kaggle have 8 cores and each of those cores have 128 cross 128 hardware matrix multipliers. Therefore, a batch size of 128 keeps all of them busy. At the same time, the learning rate um, is usually increased with batch size because the TPUs crunch to the training data very fast. Uh, we've used two different main, uh, strategies for training our model, one transfer learning and another ensemble learning. The base model provided by Kaggle itself was VGG16 with an input image size of 512 cross 512. Um, we added a global average pooling layer and finally our job, softmax layer. Later on, we went on to use several other pre-training models such as ResNet, Inception, and DenseNet. In case of data augmentation, we initially started with spatial level transforms uh, such as left, right, and up and down transformation and cropping the image. And also some pixel level transformations such as the saturation, contrast, change in brightness, and gamma levels. We used uh, some custom designed uh, data augmentations for us, especially rotation, shift, share, and zoom. The final model we selected for our image classifier relies heavily on transfer learning using a pre trained model. Out of 18 models, DenseNet 201 consistently yielded the best results. This is an image classification model that was trained on ImageNet, a project with millions of images used for neural network training. As the name suggests, it has 201 layers, consisting largely of convolution and pooling layers. Its default weights and biases were used as the starting point for training our model. No further tweaks or layer additions we're able to improve the performance. We try
drive layers like dropout and additional fully connected layers. While no other layers were used in order to include in order to improve performance, hyperparameters were used instead. Kaggle uses F1 scoring to measure success of a model. F1 scoring uses the ratio of precision times recall over precision plus recall. Precision and recall are ratios of true positives, false positives, and false negatives. The F1 score of our baseline model was under 0.4, while our final model reached almost 93. Another metric used to measure performance of neural networks is loss and accuracy. Our baseline model had training and validation loss both above two and a low accuracy around only 50%. Our improvements to the network yielded validation loss under 0.3 and validation accuracy consistently above 94% and sometimes as high as 96%. The graphs of loss and accuracy over 11 epochs shows that the model was able to quickly improve performance within three or four epochs. A better way to visualize the success of a model is with a confusion matrix. This matrix lists all 104 types of flowers down the left axis and across the top. When a flower listed on the left side is classified as a flower across the top, the intersecting square is darkened. The very dark diagonal line indicates that many of the validation predictions were correct. On Samadhani, if payment stands on Samadhani, usually allows us to combine decisions from multiple models. So basically, you have two different kinds of models and their predictions, and you try to make a decision by looking at the predictions of both those models. Usually, the most basic types of um, using ensemble learning are you try to find the mode of the class that is being predicted. So, the, the more the number of times class is being predicted, you might choose that. Some, in some cases, you might just take an average of all the predictions. And in our case, we have used a weighted average of those predictions, like point three was a weighted average for the predictions of Bell's and whereas point seven was a weighted average for efficient and seven. Uh, there are other methods such as bagging and posting, which we haven't tried yet. The ensemble models that we use in our case are one, DenseNet 201 and Efficient 927. We use both the models, generated their predictions, and weighted some of their predictions to get our final prediction values. The, the final results that they've got were in case of ensemble learning of DenseNet 201 and Efficient 927, Got 96.2%. Whereas only with transfer models, we've got 93.2%. Therefore, a 3% improvement in case of constant learning. We learned a lot from this project. Prior to this project, none of us had background in TensorFlow and TPU. We participated in an international machine learning competition for the first time. We learned how to use TensorFlow in image classification. We learned how to use tf.keras to do image augmentations and callback functions to tune the learning rates and apply checkpoints for our long training process. These approaches uh, were not used in competition project. Additionally, the data size was much larger and number of classes to deal with was also much larger than our class competition uh, project. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Thank you.